How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is Finding the References, the branded series for finding every reference in the Henry Stickman collection. We are on part two of completing the mission, so if you missed the first one, check it out. You should be able to watch them in either order, but it'll flow the tiniest bit better going one and two. I won't be covering any routes or fails that don't have any references, and I'll ignore background elements such as character bios previously covered. For each branch of completing the mission, you choose one starting point from airship and complex. I am working my way through these, one airship ending at a time. So next up will be pure-blooded thief. This one actually only has three branches instead of four, so yay, this one might not be quite as long. Because Henry went rogue in infiltrating the airship, neither the government or the Top Hats want to work with him. Cutting off the routes, international rescue operative, and the betrayed. Now, I wouldn't recommend stealing a giant ruby from a criminal organization, but I have no real say over what you guys do in your spare time. What I maybe could have some say in, if you do choose to get up to anything a little crazy online, then it's in your best interest to keep yourself protected. The best way to do that genuinely is NordVPN. You wear a seatbelt when you drive your car, you put on a helmet when you fly your rocket through space, you should boot up a VPN to protect yourself online. This thing opens in a second, connects even quicker, it's literally never let me down, it could not be simpler. And with up to six simultaneous connections for one subscription cost, you really can't go wrong. You can easily use it on your phone, there is an extension that you can build straight into Chrome, it's all incredibly valuable in this day and age. I have been a paying customer of this service for over four years now, I've recently re-upped for two more. If you follow a link in the description, you can get yourself a series serious discount on Nord and support the channel. You get two full years of protection for 68% off. If I would have had my way, it would have been 69. I'm sorry, guys. Guess I don't have that much sway, but you do get an extra four months free. So, you know, that's worth more than the extra percent anyways. That's nordvpn.com slash two left thumbs. The two is spelt out T-W-O. Thank you guys for hearing me out. Thank you, Nord, for being so chill and so easy to work with. We can get back to the video. Starting with pure-blooded thief and ghost inmate. Henry stopped the top ats by destroying the airship, but didn't actually help the government in capturing any of the leaders. He instead went rogue and stole the ruby for himself. He then snuck away from the complex without helping Ellie. This is our very selfish Henry. The station has been in orbit for two weeks and is being used to steal various artifacts, with a suspicion being that they stole the Tunisian diamond. While watching the recurring BCC, we learn that in addition to the Tunisian diamond, the stolen ruby was in fact the Romanian ruby, and the new gem is the Norwegian emerald. Henry is eating looped fruits with a peeved off toucan man. At least, that's what I'd call him. The brand appears to be Carl O.G. instead of Kellogg's. And the rest of it is obviously Fruit Loops and Toucan Sam. The framing with Henry eating cereal and choking kind of mimics Pamels from the old Serial Guy Rage comic slash reaction memes. It's not a perfect match, so that just might be the coincidence of a stick eating cereal, but it's near enough that I'd buy it. I like the comic book style panel used for speaking to Reginald shown here, but I think that's more just a stylistic thing across many comics rather than a specific reference. I mean, this is the same character that has literal comic cutouts behind him, so it might be playing off of that, everything about this guy is just comic related. The number in the corner of this camera is LOL9001, or LOL, and an over 9000 meme. I was fully prepared for the binary in the bottom right to convert to some nerdy reference like NCC-1701, you know, the Starship Enterprise, something like that. Nope, it just reads, fart lol. And honestly, in a lot of ways, that's better anyways. Henry is also flying in on his iconic scooter, seen in every game of the series since stealing the diamond. Barrel Roll initiates a very detailed Star Fox 64 scene, with the icon for this even looking a little like the R-Wing showed from behind like it would be in-game. The most direct and obvious link to Star Fox being the way Peppy will yell, Do a Barrel Roll, in-game. Do a Barrel Roll! The rest builds off the Star Fox link from there. The dialogue pop-ups with limited lip-syncing frames and gibberish speech. <laughs> Bim, 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 bim. 
along with the actual role and effects, and eventual Big Bomb all lean into the Star Fox reference. The fail text of, that was an aileron role, is actually teasing the role performed by both Henry and the way it works in the Star Fox games. A barrel roll involves a flight pattern of twisting along the cylinder of an invisible barrel. Simply rotating 360 degrees around your own central axis is instead an aileron roll. Star Fox is a terrible listener. Or Peppy's terrible at evasive maneuvers, someone's bad at their job. Light speed is simply moving at the speed of light, and is a sci-fi trick most commonly associated with Star Wars. It's hard to tell how specific this one is meant to be, Star Wars might make sense because they're shooting green lasers at the incoming Henry. I'm curious if the image with the little thruster rings is meant to come from the Jetsons? Although they actually have flying space scooters, and those instead use a sort of jet stream, but it could be a merging of those semi-futuristic ideas. I went searching for a game where the character flashes white like this when hit. Instead, the closest thing I could think of was the Holdo maneuver from The Last Jedi. It's not that exact of a comparison, but would make sense building off the light speed setup. Maybe it's a color flip of deaths seen in Super Hot. I'm not that familiar with that game. I think I'm gonna need some assistance. You forgot to hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. References Samuel L. Jackson's relatively iconic line from Jurassic Park. Mosquito Mode grants Henry entry to the ship and initiates what is maybe my favorite sequence in completing the mission. As Puffballs teased back in our interview, and as many are now aware, we get a massive, wonderful recreation and tribute to Puff's first ever game back from 2007, before breaking the bank. And before Henry was even a named character, there was Crossing the Pit, the progenitor to this whole series that involved a simple series of buttons allowing a nameless stick man to verb the noun. Uh, I mean, cross the pit. There were eight options, including the original appearance of the now quintessential teleporter. I have my suspicions that this giant pit, you know, and a seemingly useless catwalk across a giant shaft inside of a spaceship is maybe meant to reference a similar area in Star Wars. If someone can think of something more on the nose, I'd love to hear it. I'll show side-by-sides of each, as well as the fail texts, which never existed in that original version, and we'll share any reference that has now been added. First up, we have Leap. Jump farther. Just good advice. Pole Vault. Well, you had good form at least. Catapult. This fail text is a joke on the trend of trebuchet memes and the running debate of which is better, trebuchets versus catapults. Funny word. Trebuchet. It is. Keep saying it. Trebuchet. Trebuchet. One more time. Trebuchet. Everybody. Trebuchet. Trebuchet. Okay, sh shut up. Ramp. <laughs> Don't worry, the top ats validate parking. Rocket? You just lit a rocket! Rockets explode! Is a direct quote from Toy Story. Wait a minute! I just lit a rocket! Rockets explode! Bridge? This one is one of the most notably changed fails, and Measure Once Cut Twice is a play on the old adage, Measure Twice Cut Once. Cannon? Kaboom, baby, is a quote from StarCraft II's Terran Marauders. Kaboom, baby! And finally, we have the teleporter, one of the most satisfying buildups in this entire series, acting as a long-term payoff within the payoff of including Crossing the Pit at all. This is only the second success of the teleporter in the whole series, despite appearing in every game. There is a lot layered in here. First, Henry throws the teleporter to the ground, showing an interesting progression of Henry being increasingly distrusting of this device. Despite him otherwise not remembering his fails, there is some strange time and space manipulation surrounding the teleporter that leaves him increasingly apprehensive to use it. After smashing it on the ground, he is teleported through so many cool locations. Throughout, we get moments from every past game. 
He is first in the air, where there would be an airship, although there specifically isn't one on this particular route. Then up the snowy peaks of the Canadian Wall, the desert where the first few games took place, both Breaking the Bank and Escaping the Prison. It's actually funny seeing how Breaking the Bank assets were reused to create this new scenery. A military base with Captain H.J. Canterbury preparing for a mission. A random volcano from which Henry jumps up to then hit his head on a branch, presumably in the Dogo Bogo jungle. You know, it looks kind of like a spruce, maybe it's just in some random forest. Then falling underwater before instead floating in space. Those last few are less referential and more about that cool physical comedy sequence. He ends up on a random street before almost being run over by the breaking the bank truck. Henry is back in a desert, but this time it appears to be the battlegrounds of infiltrating the airship after using armor, near where the Chaos Containment Center's headquarters are found. Then, Kesington's chamber seen previously in the painting portals, the Top Hat's jungle base with the train seen in the background, as well as a tank crushed under the gate. This is very specifically seen in the Top Hat King route, which we have yet to cover. There's a quick Dr. Mario reference, the same alien Starcraft planet seen in Fleeing the Complex, Super Smash Bros. Final Destination, previously seen referenced in Infiltrating the Airship, that same forest or jungle setting again, the two-fort map from Team Fortress 2, the same endless void Henry is sent to when using the teleporter in Infiltrating the Airship, we get a giant Sans face floating like the Majora's Mask moon, although more than likely it's just round because it's a stigmatified version, with bad time sketched in the air, referring to a line from Sans on an Undertale genocide route, warning you not to fight his brother or else the player will have a bad time. The first note of Megalovania can be heard. In front of the sun, but unfortunately too quickly for a proper shoop meme, the museum rooftop where Henry used the teleporter in stealing the diamond, a horrifying giant version of Shrek that for some reason has the scribbly eyes seen in Rick and Morty, the volcanoes again, the sky again, Sonic's Green Hill Zone, a now empty military base, a Super Mario Bros. castle level with swamps, the platform from this game that usually has the Sam turret, a recreation of Crossing the Pit complete with Henry actually being transformed to match the style of that previous game. I love that this reference exists in the larger callback to that series when actively trying to cross the gravity pit. Like I said, there are layers to the references here. Back to the street, a glimpse at a sculpture of the Shoop de Whoop meme, and by that I mean a real world physical sculpture. This actually exists on Puff's Newgrounds page. He apparently made it himself, it dates back to 2009, was made for an art class, and is sculpted from plaster and colored with color pencils. We have this flat view of a blocky Minecraft world, then the open water and the wall again. Next, the firing range from escaping the prison's teleporter fail. A generic hanging construction beam, which I'm actually unsure of. Dang, I almost got all the references here myself. A quick flash of space. Then Dig to China, Inner Sloth's first game. A background from Puffball's League of Legends quick tip animation. The bank wall that Henry tries to break through, but also the one he gets stuck in during that teleporter fail. Meaning we have now revisited every larger location from these different games games, as well as every individual teleporter use location across these games. And finally, the intended vault, which is filled with oh so many more references. We have the golden AK-47, Hestus's gift, a Mario superstar, and golden iron ingots previously seen in the cleaned them out ending. Beyond that, we have what is possibly a Fabergé egg, an unknown eye patch, possibly from a previous leader? I would say maybe the Demo Man? You know, a TF2 reference? But we actually see them relatively near all of this, in one of the game's other openings chilling up north, so I don't know, maybe it's Nick Fury? An unknown log, which is simultaneously so generic and so familiar, this one drives me crazy, but I think is meant to be Jimi Hendrix's white Stratocaster guitar, what is presumably someone's first earned dollar, a Bioshock Infinite Murder of Crows Vigor, no it's not Infinite Crows, a healing potion, but who knows from what specific game, Nacho Libre's Luchador Mask, the Ice Key from Banjo-Kazooie, a placeholder drawing where the stolen ruby would go, the hat of longtime Top Hat leader Dusty, and Strawberry Clock of Newgrounds fame. Oh man, how many minutes did we spend just covering Crossing the Pit and the Vault here? 
Now we can actually get back on track with real route progression. Wall clip is a reference to the general idea of exploiting in-game bugs to pass through a wall and skip ahead. It's something most commonly utilized by speedrunners as described by the fail text. While falling through the floor, we see through to the underside of the map in a common way that happens in many 3D games with similar glitches and bugs, which by the way, the art here is insanely well done, I love the effect. It's hard to tell how specific or generic this one was meant to be. While Smash seems much more in line with The Incredible Hulk, we instead get a Dragon Ball reference, with Henry shouting his way through a power-up before straight up blowing up the space station. I mean, I guess the Hulk kinda does that too, but I can't not see Goku trying to go Super Saiyan here. Grabbing the emerald is as simple as using open. Henry tries to trudge along carrying this thing before running into Right Hand Man and Wilhelm Krieghaus. In the background, we have a See Something, Say Something poster. As a phrase, this was first trademarked by the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority and is licensed to the US Department of Homeland Security. Here, the phrase is repurposed for an Among Us meme, Inner Sloth's Other Game. This same poster also literally appears in that game as well. Plus, there's an ad to learn guitar at the lowly cost of only $5 an hour. Chance Time is activated through a purple exclamation mark block from Mario, with Chance Time itself coming from the Mario Party series. Henry here is rather unlucky, and after literally rolling die, since I guess he didn't have the blocks to jump and whack, he has to give up his emerald to right hand man. Chance Time does always screw you over. The successful option is to yell. Henry's yell is a spin on Skyrim's Fusro Da, with the syllables and vowels being swapped around. Rado. Then, floating around with Right Hand Man's top hat air supply, they point a laser straight at Henry. Load Save is a play on emulators having save states using a classic floppy disk save icon. I'll explain in greater detail the full use of this in-game when we encounter the save state on another branch. If you either encountered the load first or close the game at all between finding the save and load, it simply sends us back a few seconds. There is a precise ordering to this. Super Henry has Henry absorb the emerald with a quick spin and a sonic sound effect. Nothing much happens before being directly vaporized. This overly loud laser blast and specific way Henry disintegrates also feel familiar, but I couldn't turn up anything myself. You need like six more emeralds before you can transform into Super Henry. That is referencing Sonic becoming Super Sonic through the use of seven Chaos Emeralds. Grow and Shrink is a callback to the Shrink and Grow device used previously in infiltrating the airship. Similar to that game, this is considered a successful option. Gadget Gabe needs to up his game. These are two of the most useful devices in this universe, and we have absolutely no word from the guy. The beam used by the ship in any of these options looks an awful lot like the one used by Galeem in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I love that some of the only things seen in Reginald's escape pod are two pictures of himself and a mini fridge. This leads to the ending Jewel Baron, with Henry having collected all three of the major jewels from this series. Our next pure-blooded thief branch is Convict Allies. The ruby is stolen, airship destroyed, and no help given to the government. But this time, we have escaped the complex with the help of Ellie. Ellie and Henry are on the run, looking to take refuge with the Top Ats. Interesting that she is aware of them and knows where to find them. They may have a video that'll interest you if this gets you asking questions. I guess Ellie's hoping they'll forgive Henry for blowing up their airship and stealing their ruby? At least we didn't actively turn in their leaders? The members of the wall mobilizing all the way from Canada to the Dogo Bogo jungle is pretty nuts, but I guess they take it personally when two convicts create a massive jailbreak, emptying out nearly the entire facility. Interesting that it is now fully canon that all of the tanks from the wall look like those from Advanced Wars. This one is driven by Mateo Gurchev, one of three people on the wall that actually knows how to operate a tank. Andre Warzow from Fleeing the Complex is one of those, while it's unclear who the third would be. I guess everyone else we see driving tanks here is just making it up as they go? Maybe these are some self-driving Tesla tanks. This smashed up car has the license plate T-Hat 2, like Top Hat 2, we already would have seen, Top Hat 1. 
Maybe these belong to Reginald and Right Hand Man. Henry and Ellie are allowed to pick one thing each, similar to their escape in fleeing the complex. The controller specifically is obviously an N64 controller. Rope plus RPG shoots an explosive right at the two of them with the fail text. What was the plan there exactly? Now this isn't the exact same, but it's a lot like, what exactly was your plan there? After using infiltrating the airship's shell. Controller plus RPG allows you to start controlling the rocket propelled grenade, which as the fail text points out, is the wrong kind of RPG to be controlled, as in a role playing game. Although, speaking of controlling a similar RPG, something that was playable on the PlayStation 2 and not the Nintendo 64 was 007 Nightfire, in which there was the Sentinel gun that had a TV guided rocket mode. So there's an example of somewhere where you could use a controller to control an RPG. Controller plus wings does nothing useful and includes a fail text referencing a memed tweet from Donald Trump, but you know, not directed at Kanye. Thank you, wings. Very cool. Our success is rope plus wings, getting bashed around, and crash landing through a window. Ellie is knocked unconscious. Yes, this is a success. The disguise kit comes from Team Fortress 2's Spy, and is used by him to look like any character on the enemy team. In that game, players on the same team as the Spy see the Spy with a paper cutout mask of whoever they are supposed to be disguised as. I suppose in this game they are indicating that this is truly all the disguise ever really is, and that the TF2 characters are just horribly unobservant. There is no character in-game who looks like this, with Henry's disguise instead appearing to be the heavy with a government military hat on? The corrupt tick is both a play on the idea of a game bug and the words corrupt and tick. As if all that wasn't obvious, it's a literal bug that causes bugs. We get the purple and black grid that indicates missing textures, and a few characters reverting to T-poses while starting to slide around. The game does a mock reset, we have an error message of the game crashing, and the main screen scene is also slightly broken, with breaking the bank selected, yet completing the mission on display. After resuming, just before Henry and Ellie dive into the window, Henry says Ellie's line from before. Let's try and get up to the- Let's try and get up to the- Body parts start disappearing from the twins, everyone is in T-poses, still with choppy, improperly loading animations, before getting one of the twins with a gun for a head and some more aggressive glitching. It's a very elaborate sequence. The fail screen instead reads, Fission mailed which is both another glitch and a reference to a joke in Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. The correct option is Time Machine, changing events quickly so the twins are kicked out of the military. While jumping across the collapsed bridge, timing out the quick time event has Henry plummet downwards. Dang, he ain't gonna be in Henry 7, is actually a reference to a blooper from Chris Tucker in the credits of Rush Hour 2. <laughs> He ain't gonna be in Rush Hour 3. <laughs> <laughs> the grapple gun harpoons Henry, who is left screaming. The fail text, Henry will remember that, is both a reference again to the choice mechanics of Telltale games, but now also serves as a callback to when Henry abandoned Ellie, prompting the same text response. Catch drags Ellie down with Henry. Fatso builds on a running joke that this stick person weighing only 110 pounds is supposedly fat. Similar fail jokes are used for climbing through the vent in escaping the prison, and when balancing on the pipe of fleeing the complex. The successful option is a hidden note block, first seen in Super Mario Bros. 3. After a big standoff with everyone involved, we get a few little musical stings for each option. What do we do? referencing each character or the broader location or game they're associated with. I love how these themes have become ingrained enough that even one single note from each becomes iconic. I seriously underappreciated the music in this series at first. It's phenomenal. There are two possible endings here. First, going with the government, we take out the rocket with the help of Charles. Surprisingly, Gale Force knows Ellie? Again, I'll gently nudge people towards a theory of her possible character history, but you know, not a lot of it is really confirmed. Here we earn 
pardoned pals. If we instead side with the top ats, there is a fake out mission complete before an epic showdown and Dimitri is thrown to his death. While not exactly the same, this isn't the first time in this series we've seen a very similar scene. It might just be a dramatic angling, or it might be intended to be a small callback. Henry and Ellie join up in top hat recruits. Henry, when not in command, gets a cool H pin on his top hat, and Ellie gets a cool pink hat with a rose, obviously playing off her last name. This is the the only route in the game to feature any real presence from the wall. And for the final pure-blooded thief branch, we add in Presumed Dead. Henry goes rogue and steals the ruby, the airship is destroyed, and Top Hat leaders remain intact, there's no government support, no Ellie, and everyone at the wall assumed Henry is dead. He's pretty well on his own. Henry decides he's going to single-handedly steal an entire rocket? Pretty ambitious. This is entirely a quick time only route, just one after the other. Henry rips onto the scene four hours before launch on his classic scooter. If you do nothing on the first choice, we get off to a good start, making fun of the fact that we're only just starting the quick time only branch and are already failing miserably. With Limbo, the small icon sound effect and slow-mo are a bit of a fake out, seeming to point towards Henry preparing to do an incredible bullet time matrix dodge. Uh, not quite. The way you end up clipping through the floor in jump feels like it must be a reference to something, especially with that grinding sound effect. My suspicion is Skate 3, but I'm not certain. The fail text of Sweet Hops Bro is a callback to the Jumble Hoppers fail in stealing the diamond. The success is Stop, one of my favorite gags in the game. Hey, can you? Oh yeah, sure thing. Wait a minute. Where acting non-suspicious and like you belong there, lets Henry straight through. Also, with this game's continuity, the Top Hats do not actually know who Henry is. He stole that ruby totally unknown, otherwise they probably would have taken it back. We have Ice Pick here complaining about how hot his hat is. This is the same guy overheard talking about the rocket up north, so he's a little overdressed. But the rules are clear. You're not allowed to change heads. You know, for quietly stealing Sal Malone's hat when the opportunity presents itself. I just generally love that gag, and it somewhat works as a callback to a similar scene in Fleeing the Complex. Hey, you wanna trade hats? Those look so nice. There's a possibility that both of those scenes are references to Team Fortress 2's aesthetic item trading, which includes lots and lots of hat swapping. If you pick the left hand items crate, Henry comes out of the side covered in the proximity mines from Nintendo 64's Goldeneye. The fail text is a quick play on words, hey, that's mine. The right hand ramp and quick trick or jump boost is a technique introduced in Mario Kart Wii and quickly after, Henry is bombed by a blue shell also from the Mario Kart series. The dread it, run from it, the shell arrives all the same is a quote from Thanos in Infinity War, while also serving as a joke about the blue shell's inevitability. I am inevitable. Do Nothing is successful for only the second time in the full series, alongside the presumed dead ending in Fleeing the Complex, which is fittingly one of the branches leading to this route. While racing up the ramp, if we do nothing, Henry crashes straight into the door. Lag is a simple reference to blaming a laggy connection for your failure rather than your own ineptitude. Battering Ram has a giant ramming device slide out the front and then tipping the scooter and leading to a faceplant. Still ignoring those physics lessons is a reference back to stealing the diamond when trying to simply place the giant Tunisian diamond in a scooter basket. This is also building off the fact that this and that very same basket fail both belong to the only two routes in the series that are entirely quick time based. Drill results in the drill getting stuck and Henry instead spinning around. <laughs> drill goes brr, 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 I can't roll my R's. This is a reference to a relatively new meme spawning from some Wojak comics about inflating the economy. There's even moneyprintergoburr.com, which is pretty funny. I've also seen people use this identical phrase for Deep Rock Galactic memes, but this is the origin. When using spike wheels, Henry races straight up the side of the rocket. At the top, he is shot at by a New Zealander, Jack Dugan. This is a bit of a joke on the fact that the sniper in this series has traditionally been based off of TF2's Mr. Mundy, with the Stickman universe having Samuel Mundy, although specifically in the pure-blooded thief route, he was stabbed and killed by the spy. 
the Australian's no longer available, bring in the New Zealander? Or instead, it could be a reference to the fact that the real Mr. Mundy was revealed to actually be from New Zealand in TF2 canon. It's also funny to see such an on-the-nose reference with him being recruited Avengers post credit style. We don't often see the precise movie, pop culture, or game being name-dropped like this. Kind of took me off guard. After missing several times and sniping Henry, we get the line, First try, which I suspect is a reference to Lego Batman. First try. Although, that may be a more common joke or phrase than I realize. The fact that everything stops here to choose between three hammers may be an unspoken hammer time joke. I'm pretty disappointed that this step along this route is not named as such. I really, really want to believe that that was the joke they intended, and they had to leave it out for copyright reasons or something. Each of these three make a distinct sound to indicate what Henry plans to start whacking with each. The rightmost hammer has Henry clubbing the thing back like Thor. Henry hijacks the rocket and does an early launch, rocket jacking all the top ats. Full speed burns up all the fuel, leading to a fake out success, while instead Henry's precision shot is crazy impressive. He's clearly learned a lot since the wall, even though very little time has passed. I thought maybe that title and icon would be an XCOM reference or something similar, but not that I can tell. One year later, Henry has converted the shuttle and reformed many of the top hats to create the Stickman Space Resort. I kind of love that we can still see right hand man's harpoon dangling off the side all this time later. There weren't a lot of segments in this game where there was just mass gatherings of characters like we had seen before, so all the new bios for this route are mostly getting lost together at the end. Bloodhound is the guy responsible for filling the top at's vaults with bounties, hunting down both people and objects. This might be a play on Dog the Bounty Hunter, that reference easily could have been more obvious if intended. That might just be this guy's job, and a very fitting earned nickname. I want to point out that Tain Flargenstow is so obnoxiously hard to collect as a bio. Seriously, this guy is just awful, probably the hardest in the whole series. He's also a reference to the Tain sequence from the Celery Man sketch in Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Great Job. What will your first sequence of the day be? Computer load up, Celery Man, please. Hey, Paul. I'm Tane, your latest dancer. I can't wait to entertain you. Could I see a hat wobble? Yes. And a flargan snow? Yes. Sarah Conifers, with her belief that AI will one day try to take over the world, is a clear reference to Terminator's Sarah Connor. Waxwell Gex is a simple play on the video game character Gex, the lovable video game lizard. Or are they a gecko? Moving on. Pendle Toad is kind of hard to pin down. It's very similar to Pendleton Ward, the creator of Adventure Time, and it might be Toad specifically to play off the fact that he is seen with Waxwell Gex. Now we have a true pair of amphibious soldiers. Dimitri returning from the wall only after convict allies has lost several teeth after being fully smashed in the face by a stop sign thanks to Ellie. He now speaks with a lisp. Similarly, we have the continuity of Gregory having a broken arm after being hit by a car. Stop sign, car, one might be a little worse. Mr. Angry is potentially a reference to Mr. Furious, Ben Stiller's character in Mystery Men. I'm less inclined to believe that because I might be the only person on the planet who likes that movie. Based on other recurring references to it, I'm surprised Puff didn't go for the classic Newgrounds Angra spelling, but being misspelled like this at all could still be riffing on that. Dima Penske reminded me of Seinfeld's Penske. It's a different spelling, nothing else really builds on that, although we do see that Puff is a Seinfeld fan. He didn't know there was this much green in the whole galaxy, is a quote from Ray in The Force Awakens. Formerly Todd Spudson, we have Todd Tater, which if he was listed on a surname based form, would be Tater Todd. Bill Cook used to live with too many people, presumably playing on the phrase too many cooks in the kitchen, although doesn't really confirm that they were actually other cooks that he lived with. Bob Pants is a pretty on-the-nose reference to SpongeBob SquarePants if he was neither a sponge nor a square. Paul Penn has a rather unexpected reference to being related to Sean Penn of all celebrities. Captain Galeforce is actually promoted to General Galeforce after dealing with the top ats. Good for him. Sten Lundgren, a Sten is actually a type of hat, it's essentially a fedora like he's wearing. I also can't ignore that he shares a surname with Dolph. 
but I don't really see any other connection. I really love the visual gag of Perry Sherman being a tired bottle collector rather than a passed out alcoholic. I got a real good belly laugh out of that the first time I saw it. Still tickles me now. Kane West, the former music producer, is an obvious play on Kanye West for seemingly no reason. Probably no point in me questioning these references anymore, is there? They're usually lacking any rhyme or reason. Rhyme and reason. Maybe the Kanye reference does make sense. Mr. Lincoln just looks like Honest Abe. That's all. I thought Patty Pride had to do with Patty's Pub and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Charlie's Weird Preferences. I've been informed it's based on a YouTube poop of the Spongebob episode Patty Hype, which then has a reference to a drink being purple. Hey, is that one purple? No! Purple is my favorite drink! <laughs> Patty hype, Patty pride. Maybe there's layers to it. I think it's the straight up SpongeBob thing. And finally, we have a top hatted character we literally only ever see from behind Henry Stickman. It actually took me a couple takes to get it right. I'm so used to saying Stickman at this point. Playing off the often mispronounced main character's name. Uh, sir, I got a message. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like uh, Henry Stickman. Stick Stickman. Yeah, Henry Stickman has escaped. You still there? And a bio that suggests that Stickman became a criminal because of that constant mixing up. There we have it, another one in the bank. Approximately half of completing the mission fully covered. Keep your suggestions coming of references I potentially missed during this section of the game. After I've covered the full series, only two more episodes to go, then there will be a final capper where I include everything that I possibly missed through the entire series. At the end of that, it is my hope that I will re-edit those back into these videos. I can't edit these literal videos, but I'll instead upload like a five five hour long monstrosity that is every reference in the Henry Stickman collection, it's gonna be great. Once again, if you guys could follow that NordVPN link, that does wonders to help me. If you're falling behind on this series, there's already a Completing the Mission References Episode 1, so you got plenty more goodness to enjoy. Thank you to patrons of the channel. The number one thing I'm working towards doing to make it more worth that monthly donation is providing the opportunity for you to pitch questions that I can then ask in developer interviews. I think it's going to offer some really fun opportunities for us to interact, and once I'm a little less busy, we'll run some polls over there and other fun things to help build up the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.